our ideas on forest gap regeneration took generations of scientists to shape and transform into a testable set of hypotheses. Naturalists of the 18th and 19th century took on a grand challenge of understanding species distributions on a global level. It was indeed a grand challenge, since in those times, even the most fundamental biological features of plants, such as photosynthesis, were not entirely understood. For instance, the relationship between light and oxygenic photosynthesis in plants was established by the Dutch physiologist Jan Ingenhuis in 1779. Legendary expeditions, like those of James Cook, Alexander von Humboldt, Henry Walter Bates, Charles Darwin, and Alfred Wallace, aimed to catalogue taxonomical riches pronounced in the tropical regions. Ecologists of the early 20th century had a strong notion of stable climax tree communities based on temperate and boreal forests. Today, the balance of nature concept still persists as a relic of this old-fashioned idea. This outdated view of stability was entirely focused on competitive interactions and largely ignored the role of disturbance on biological communities. As such, throughout the first quarter of the 20th century, ecologists were preoccupied with questions on the nature of communities. In 1916, Frederick Edward Clements argued that communities were superorganisms formed through self-organization of species with a co-evolutionary history. In 1918, Henry Allen Gleason provided a counter-argument with the individualistic continuum concept, describing communities as random sets of populations with minimal functional integration. However, things began to change when studies from species-rich tropical forests started to synthesize the taxonomic diversity through the perspective of ecology and evolutionary biology. In 1938, the French botanist André Aubreville linked variability in the dominant forest species to regenerative success and failure. Aubreville's view was further promoted by others such as Alexander Stuart Watt and Paul Westmacott Richards under the terms mosaic or cyclical pattern of regeneration. Ecologists began to favor the idea of a forest growth cycle consisting of a dynamic equilibrium among gap, building, and mature phases, instead of a stable equilibrium leading to a climax community. In order to test this highly hypothetical and descriptive concept of forest growth cycle, ecologists set out a rigorous research effort under an umbrella term, gap phase dynamics. In 1978, Joseph Connell proposed one of the most influential hypotheses in gap phase dynamics research, known as the Intermediate Disturbance Hypothesis. The Intermediate Disturbance Hypothesis predicts that the local species diversity is maximized when ecological disturbance occurs at an intermediate frequency and intensity. Treefall gaps fit into this prediction quite nicely, since disturbance caused by a few trees is modest in scale compared to those of fire, landslides, avalanches, or hurricanes. Mm -hmm.